Welcome back, everybody, to the Predator WPA the Men's Predator World WPA Fanball World Championship. Our uh, next match for today is USA's Shane Van Boning taking on Philippines' Carlo Biado. In the commentary booth, we will have Mark White and Tim Rue for y'all to catch the action. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Tim. Now, I'm just wondering about this match because... Carlo has already had a match this morning and Shane Van Boning had a walkover against Jeremy Sose. So, you know, Carlo's a little bit more warmed up or has the rest done Shane Van Boning a little bit of good? We're going to find out. It's best of three sets, races to four. And if we're level after two sets, uh, sorry, in 3-3 three, three, in the third set, we will go to one of those shootouts that everyone dreads, Tim. Yeah, it could be a huge deal, actually, the fact that Shane has not played a match yet compared to Carlo. On the other side, I thought Shane did look pretty good in the Las Vegas Open last week, so he might still be in great shape, and he's definitely looking to take the title this week. Yeah, and that man in your picture there had a good shot at the title as well, didn't he? Lost in the final of the Las Vegas Open up against his fellow countryman, Lee Van Corteza. So he'll be looking to go one better this week. But it's Shane Van Bonin who's gone one better in the leg and will break in sets number one and number three. And of course, it's winner breaks apart from that. So here we go then, breaking from near the centre. We have the break guru in the booth. What does he think of this first break? Oh, wow. That's so unlucky to start with. He hit that so good. It's tough to argue with change break, to be honest. Because that cue ball was very nicely controlled and just very unfortunate to have the four-railer run into the cue ball and scratch in the side, so... Great chance for Carlo to put the early heat on Shane. Yeah, the disappointment on his face as he saw that ball kiss the cue ball into the side pocket. And the long, slow walk back to the chair. Chance for Carlo then, early on, to stamp his authority and, more importantly, get the break back, Tim. Yeah. So play the five to the corner. You get a little bit more angle on the five ball than you would have wanted to. Do. Has to play. Can he draw into it? Yeah, I think he has to draw into it, and with some base, won't be able to play too soft. Six might go towards the rail. That's why he played the double base. Nicely done. Definitely one of my favorites to watch, Carlo. Always impressed by how he runs the cue ball around the table. Very good feel for the cue ball. Speed and spin. Very natural player, isn't he? Very creative as well. I love the final he played against Cortez up. Perfect angle on the nine to get back to that short rail for the 10 ball. Maybe a little higher on this 10. Of course, he still has the cut. A little bit more difficult. So Carlo Biado takes the first rack after that unlucky scratch from Shane on the break. And let's see if he can 
produce a similar break like Shane. I do believe Carlo does break from the center as well, so pretty open attacking layouts. Not so much defense after the break. In general, you never know, can always happen, but less than breaking from the side rail. This is our second round on the first day of the WPA Predator World Men's 10 ball. And Eklund Kachi, reigning champion, had a good win earlier on in the 10 a.m. round against Skylar Woodward in straight sets. A little bit of a shock. Joshua Filler losing out in his first match against Alex Paggy Lyon. Of course, that's never a bad thing to lose out to such a class player. Anyway, back to this one for now. Good break again. Balls from Biardo as well. Yeah, a big pop of, with the cue ball. Maybe didn't hit him right in the face, but the main objective definitely worked, which is making balls on the break. And he's got shape on the one, which is even more important. One good shot on this one ball. Could give him a decent lead in his first set. Top field, 64 quality players. Playing for first prize of $75,000. 45 to the runner-up. So plenty on offer, Tim, to, to tempt the players into bringing their A game to this predator table. He did end up on the wrong side of the two ball from that look, we got the four does not pass the five ball to the corner. So he's either going to play with draw and go two rails for the four on the side. Can he go in between the seven, nine? Oh, nice shot from Carlo there. Beautiful. It is that freedom of movement around the table that you was just talking about. Beautiful control of the cue ball. Letting the cue ball go where it wants to go kind of thing, you know, go with the flow. Biardo. show you yeah. Tim doesn't it that even though Shane had such a great break just that little bit of bad luck on the break and it's Biardo who's in clearing the balls up well which is not an easy task at all because you gotta be there from the beginning right at the start to put that early pressure on Shane and you know sometimes you actually show up but sometimes you don't get the feel and you might not run out in the beginning after getting a chance so Carlo is right on at this point if he makes his 10 and he's looking good too his cue ball doesn't really wander that much and the saying goes doesn't it how many racks will a mistake cost you it's a little bit harsh to say that that scratch was a mistake on the break but a little bad run Tim and all of a sudden it's 2-0 and this was a beautiful shot wasn't it yeah there was a really small window in between the 7-9 of course it looks very big but the angle of him coming off the short rail gives him not that much room to go right in between so what he did there looked a lot easier than it actually was Two games to nothing. <coughs> Two. Very subdued looking SVB at the moment. They do have two completely different breaks from each other. Oh, Carlo did have a good break last time and now he still goes to the side rail. That's interesting. 
three. He did break from the side before Tim. Identical break. Look, made the three, the uh, four railer. Sorry, three ball in the corner. Shot at the one again. Look at this. Well, could be on the hill very quickly here. Come on, Tim. I want to hear it. I want to hear those words. <laughs> well, he he definitely had a good cue ball on that break. That's for sure. <laughs> Tough team, I'm going to call you from now on. <laughs> now, of course, he hit that break great, and then again, only key shot was getting from the one ball to the two ball. I was a little bit confused because I really believed that he was breaking from the center on the first break, but I could have been wrong. That works. So, straight on the four. You would favor Carlo to get on the hill in this first set. Being wrong can, ha can happen to him. It happened to me once back in 1989, I seem to remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good stuff, isn't it? From the Filipino. Well, it's also exactly what the game is giving him. Like I mentioned before, breaking from the side creates a little bit more clusters. But for him, so far, not so many clusters. So a little draw on the seven ball. Try to get straight on the eight. That would be ideal. Straight on the eight would give him a good angle on the nine ball to get back down table for the ten as well. Could stun the cue ball to the short rail. No, he was fine. Was depending on the angle he got on the eight, but he did get straight, so. Two rail position for that 10 ball and he is keeping Shane Van Boning in the seat 3-0 Carlo Biado now then one of your fellow countrymen Yannick Pongas had a good win early on against Sina Valiza Day you might remember him Tim from the Las Vegas Open I believe he beat yeah. Sky Woodward he's back in action again and he's up against Aloysius Yap on one of our outer tables. Tell us a little bit about Yannick. Good young player, right? Yeah, has an incredible high gear. Um, he just gets comfortable at some point. And then he's really tough to beat. But still, he's young and a little bit wild, so course we'll need some more experience and some more work on his moving game to make him all around very dangerous but he's already done pretty good in European tournaments so, yeah he finished second in the European Championships once already so good prospect for the Dutch team in the next couple of years for sure who knows maybe this year on the world Temple Championship. I think this guy coming to the table now has got a, a future as well in the game. US Open champion, of course. 3 0 ahead on the hill, looking to break and get that first set under his belt. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Three balls and perfect on the two ball. Did. What a way to lose the set, the first set for Shane. Or at least, of course, he still has to run out, but just look at the balls. Make the two ball guaranteed to be on the four to the side to go up table for the five. That might be the only shot to this wreck, the two, the two, four, five, to connect the dots. I think he's got perfect. Can draw into the long rail to guarantee a shot on the five. So one good shot here. It's 
known as the black tiger and this tiger is certainly pouncing at the moment Shane Van Boning is hidden there he is in his chair shaking his head can't believe it that one unlucky scratch off an almost perfect break gonna have to work on the break Shane well you gotta say he did make sure that the cue ball got past the side he didn't hit him right square in the face but still was good control on the break so yeah actually i believe it was really unlucky to scratch on that first break on the other side you gotta give credit to carlo he's been breaking great look at the, the layouts he's got and hasn't made any mistake This is a perfect set from Carlo Biado. He is definitely winning this first set. Fabulous stuff from the Filipino. So let's just have a little jump around the room for you. Daniel Maciel. Puerto Rico 2023 runner-up to this man at the table actually Carlo Biardo he is 2-1 up in the first set against Mario He from Austria Eklan Kachi defended champion back in action 3-0 ahead against Luca Menin Francisco Sanchez Ruiz against another German Uma Dorma he's 2-1 up in that one FSR now, Jason Shaw, 2-0 down in his first set to Mieszko Fortunski. Back to this one then, Biardo, looking for that perfect break, Tim. Oh, it's hitting him so oh, square. But this time it's dry. look at the cue ball it's just he's been hitting the break good just this time nothing threatening the pocket like one was on its way but got kicked away from the side pocket so safety here from Shane needs some table time and he's overhit this I think chance for well, he can get behind the 4 7 here, Tim, I think, can't he? Thin this one ball. Yeah, yeah, he is possible if he can play with some left spin, feather the one ball into the short rail and come back out behind the 4 7. Of course, he's going to try and leave the one ball doubled up with the nine. You see, he didn't even get behind the 4 7, but he knew he was not going to sell out at least. So let's see if he plays the two rail bank safety. Could call the one ball in the corner, one rail, but yeah, maybe he's worried about bumping the nine. If he runs into the nine, that's trouble. He's looking at cutting the one into the nine. No, I do like this one the best. I don't think the one ball is going to be close to the corner, but... Oh, he's playing the one of the nine in the corner. Yeah, tried to take care of the cue ball and didn't get it, so... Another chance for the Pinoy Biado. did mention briefly at the start, Tim, that this is Shane's first game today. He got a walk over in his first one, so he hasn't had any real time to get that arm going and to build some confidence, and it is showing. But that miss from Biardo, uncharacteristic, has left Shane in now with a golden opportunity to get 
into this game. Yeah, it was a tricky one ball. You had to do a lot with the cue ball to make something happen. It's the main reason why he's missed the one ball. And one good shot on this one ball. Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, what's Same thing happening here. Had to beat the kiss on the 10. Probably just that little bit of focus more on the cue ball than on the shot itself. Yeah, not it's quite often. Quite a lot, don't you? I wouldn't expect this to happen from these two players. Back and forth missing the one ball. That's how it get how the game goes sometimes. And you load the cue ball up with with left and go around the nine ten, or is he drawing all the way back up table? He is drawing all the oh, way up table. Pick. Oh, oh stop it! <laughs> oh wow! Still needs another way back. Unbelievable, team, isn't it? Look at this. Yeah, still awkward two ball, but if he makes a two and not scratch, three ball is hanging over the corner, of course. Yeah, nicely done. So another chance to take the lead. Yeah, gotta say, Carlo does look better at this moment than Shane does. It's the first match. It always gives that little confidence, winning your first round and you get to play right after, or shortly after. Coming up to 11.30 in the morning in the Philippines. They'll be enjoying their coffee. Mapuai to all uh, Filipino fans. I know there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them. attempts Tim to get a ball down in this particular rack it was Biardo finally made that great shot on the one drawing all the way back for the two and he takes the opening rack in the second set and he did have a very good run of course in the Las Vegas Open reaching the final Tim so you could say he's in dead punch you know he's he's found a nice piece of form and he's keeping it going Welcome back to the Predator WPA World 
Istanbul Championship. Carlo Biado has already won the first set, 4-0. And is leading again, 1-0 in the second set. And another one of those breaks, look at this. Don't think that seven ball got right in between. Look at the cue ball. See them. I mean, it's so super close to square in the face, and it's getting good spreads. Made those balls to the side quite often. Now, if he can get seven ball on the two ball. And now it's just about getting the cue ball out of there. Could possibly go off the eight, two rails forward. Don't think he can play draw off the eight, but he might be able to draw the cue ball off the eight to the center. He needs to hit that eight ball dead in the, full in the face, doesn't he? If he can. Looks like you might be going forwards though, Tim, your first choice. Yeah, that, that is the choice. Like it's it's either you skim off the eight and you choose to go forward, or you have to to have the position to go off the eight, but you gotta catch it full. He did skim off the eight and look how he's played that. Just perfect. Of course he got the cue ball on the rail, but the tough task was definitely to get the cue ball out of there and he's done very nice just look at that pace it's like getting ball in hand shapes most of the time okay so the eight ball is a little bit in the way here but I think he can still stun can he draw the cue ball out from the eight? Oh, beautiful. Well, he also knew that if he would clip the eight, the cue ball would still go up table. So, still did have quite some room to bring the cue ball. And he's just... I think he's in that bunch. Okay, maybe a little bit further on the seven wall, but he's just looking very comfortable moving the cue ball around. I hope those chairs are comfortable because Shane has spent a lot of time in that one. Now though, there is a scratch on this seven ball. That's why he played with double speed and he's got a long eight ball. Wasn't trying to find that 10 ball. I think I this is I the didn't. first positional mistake. First positional mistake I think we've seen in this match from Biardo. Tim. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I was gonna say I hope I haven't jinxed him. I just said he's maneuvering the cue ball around so well. Oh, beautiful. Oh, dear, oh, dear. oh. Okay. you know, Fabulous stuff. bringing the cue ball around like that, you know, that's one. But now if you run out of shape and you can recover like that, it's too, really tough to beat a guy who's playing like this. And it shows he's up 2-0. Very, very impressive stuff let's go around the room very quickly for you sanchez ruiz 3-2 down in the first set against yu madonna chan jung lin is 2-0 down to oliver snonoki yesko fortunski is level with jason shaw jason was two behind in that one wu kun lin is a setup and 2-1 up against mustafa almar robbie capito is all square with fellow countrymen Yip Kim Ling Liao, They're at level at 2 2. Wojtek Shevchek, champion here two years ago, of course, three 
one up against Gerson Martinez Boza. Danny Hewitt, the Canadian, is two one up against Japanese Hayatu Hijikata. Fedor Gorst level two two with Bashir Hussein Abu Mayid. Back to this one. Yardo, can he repeat that break? He'd love to. Well, this time. Wow. He, oh, I was going to say this time he didn't hit it square in the face. But still, two balls dropped. And the one, Tim, watch the one, was on its way. He got kicked away and he came all the way back round off two rows and dropped in. And then the five ball going as well. It looked like it was going to be dry for a, a couple of seconds. All of a sudden, two balls down and a shot at the two. It also looked like there was going to be a cluster along the long rail with the three, four and the five. But it has opened up very nicely just this to the side. Get something on the three ball, the four balls next to it, and a chance to get on the hill again. You gotta feel a little bit for Shane because he's broken once. That's it. And he got unlucky. Oh, he's, he has played a safety shot and he sold out. That's one safety mistake and one unlucky scratch on the break. There's been lots of talk about the new format. Last year it was a straight race to eight. It's kind of still a race to eight because if you get to eight first, you're going to win. We had an interesting match earlier on, Tim. Jason Short was up against Dennis Grabe. And they both shared the first two sets, 4-3 respectively. So it was seven all, kind of hill hill. Now, normally it would have been just one rack to decide the winner, of course, in the old format. But in this new format, they got a whole new set. So it's kind of a longer race, it can be. Yeah, I have spoken with many players and most of the players, they do consider it a race to eight, like you just mentioned. I also believe this is a better way of thinking because a race to four could potentially put a lot more pressure on you. You know, there's less time to make something happen compared to winning eight racks. And of course, it's winner breaks as well, Tim. So, you know, it's not too different, not too dissimilar. On the hill again, though, Yardo. Well, if anyone else is watching this, any other players have decided to come and see how Biardo's playing, Tim, there's your answer and there's the stats to prove it. Yeah, like you can see, Shane only, only balls pocketed. Just look at those statistics, 68 to 2. What can you do from the chair, right? 9% table time to 91. And this is probably Carlo's last break, unless Shane can make something happen. But I don't think there is something coming. Well, probably the safety. But has made another ball on the break. Is he trying to get in behind the the five? No, the six. Sorry. Well, his main objective was getting the one ball there. Of course, would have loved to get the cue ball behind the six. Shane can go two rails at this. Nick the one, get the cue ball to the right side of the 4-2. How often do you see that, Tim? One, two, three, four, five, all in a little cluster. 
over by that side pocket. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it, this game, what it can do sometimes. All the first five balls in a row. Well, and also, if you had some more table time, that kick shot was pretty reasonable to play. But he's been in his chair all match, so that extremely difficult to get that feel. Now, if the one ball got frozen to the rail, that actually makes things more difficult because he has to hit another rail after contacting the one ball. Besides the fact that the only shot I can see is the intentional foul or twice yeah, the long put, rail. It will put him though, Tim, on two fouls and we are playing three fouls, so he's got to be very careful here. Oh, he could be in big trouble. This could be over real soon. What's he doing here? Well, if he's going to nick the one next to the two ball and make sure the kick over the bottom long rail in this view, if it's not there, I wouldn't know how to get to this one ball. Well, there might be there might be a chance here for Shane if he can find the window. It's a small one, but it's there. Has to hit this, or or he loses the match. Has to hit the one, and he has done it. That's, that's why I said if Carlo was able to take away the kick over the long rail, if that cue ball was stuck with the three or the four, it would have been checkmate. What, that was very, very close, though. He just missed the two, Tim, there on the way through, and he's more trouble here for Shane again. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not out of the woods. Well, he's been paroled once from jail. He's going to be wishing he could get a pardon. Foul. So, another deliberate foul. And he's going to be in trouble. It's more or less, Tim, a carbon copy of what we just saw. He can get the cue ball froze to the four, taking away the kick over the long rail. Yeah, he has done. Now this well, is. How'd you get this? I was gonna say this is a tough one. He might have to jack up the cue, messe to first get to that long rail, and then bend it back to the left spin. Oh, and he's overdone it. He's on two fouls. Now, if Shane had... I don't had think Shane's pot... Sorry, Tim, I was going to say, I don't think Shane's potted a ball yet. It's not often you see eight racks without a ball being potted. Now, if Carlo can go two rails and stick the cue ball behind the seven, this could be checkmate. How is the speed? How is the speed? Too hard. So now. I don't think he can feather the one. He still might be in big trouble. He needs to find... He only has got maybe a half a ball on the one ball from this angle. Oh, look at this. Oh, what a shot. 
one two to five. Great shot. That was unbelievable. Such a high risk. Could have lost the match right there. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> he looks in it, Tim. Yeah, I know. I was just going to say, you know, it, he could recover from being down one set and three a zero in the second set. There'll be a huge roar if he can put these last three balls and get on the board. I think it's fair to say it's a very partisan crowd in favour of Captain America on home soil, of course. Wow. You know, I, I, I did mention if Carlo could have gotten the cue ball two rows behind the seven, Shane would be in jail, but still, look at this. Unbelievable shot from Shane. Albin Ocean in a, a real battle against Roman Hebler. He's just taken the lead, Albin, to go 3-2 in their first set. Fedor Gorst by the same score, 3-2, up against Bashir Hussein Abdu Mahid. Back to this epic battle. You know, it could actually be possible for Shane to run seven in a row here if he makes a ball on the break. No. Could have been possible as he would be breaking in the third set if he got there. So many balls getting close to a pocket. The eight almost went, the ten almost went, and the nine almost went in the side. Yeah, the eight ball picked up the wrong spin, didn't it? If it had had left-hand spin rather than right-hand spin on it, it would have gone in off the jaw of the pocket but unfortunately for Shane it was the opposite you know, look at this behind the back caught the 10 ball so not on the two as he would have wished so Shane not out of it yet yeah a little surprised he played it with left spin as well was thinking about going two rails run into the 6-9 open that cluster and be on the two Still can play great safety. Could call the two ball in the corner where the eight is and bring the cue ball to the short rail just in case you make it, you get on the three ball. All out safety. Well, he won't be too happy because the six nine didn't come into play. If the 6-9 would be in between, it would take the jump away. Now there is a jump. Yeah, I was expecting him to play the jump. Could play, of course, 2-8 combo. It's called the 8. It is do or die, but at least he's got a shot. Well off line there. Caught it much too thin. Trying to get a much fuller hit. So the eight ball will be called by the Black Tiger. Calling the Black Eight. Oh no. I, can't. I don't believe what I've just seen. I was surprised that he was playing it so firm, but then still you would expect Carlo to make it. Yeah, this is a tricky one. 
difficult. You can still cheat the pocket and go to the center of the table, but it's not easy. And it also it relies on your speed control, and he's got too far on this three ball. That's why he was looking at the shot to go towards the three ball, towards his positional area. And yeah, we will see. He's going to have to go, he's going to have to go all the way around here, Tim, isn't he? he? Missed that 10 yeah. ball. He was just looking at that. Can he draw past the side pocket or is it too thin? No, I think he can load the cue ball up with a lot of left. Oh, I was expecting him to go deeper. A little drama in this rack. Oh, when Biardo stepped up to the table with that 2-8 combo, Tim, I was getting ready to wax lyrical about what a great performance this has been. Carlo Biardo and then he missed a sweet forward combo. Now then Shane has got cover behind that 6-9. But we all know about the Filipino kickers. Yeah, he's definitely not going to feel comfortable in the chair knowing that if Carlo makes the four, could be on the five. Just look at this, the shot clock came into play. He just dropped down, winged at it, and really could have left so many other shots than look at Carlo running. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> He's run <laughs> running running like a tiger, wasn't he? So thin cut to the side. Found the 10, does he oh. get on the 5? Does he get on the 5? Oh! He does. <laughs> so now, could run into the 9 ball, could also try to avoid the 9. Just doesn't want to hit the edge and then crawl behind it again. Oh! That was not something I was expecting. Completely took his eye off the, the pot, didn't he? he? Was concentrating on that nine ball. Yeah, just one good shot on this five ball. Cut it in with inside spin. Get next to the nine ball on the rail. And now just four balls away. What a match we've seen. He's looking, he's looking rusty, isn't he, Tim? And we've mentioned, and I'm going to mention it again, Biardo already had one match this morning. Shane didn't because of that walkover against Jeremy Sosi. And it's been all Biardo, really. Shane had a couple of chances, but real uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic misses from Captain America. And it looks like he's going to the one lost side. Two balls left. Nothing difficult at all to do with the cue ball. So this is to continue his run. Shane will be back in the loser's bracket. He could at least have a chance to go to the last 16. But he's not out yet. So we will see Shane back, I believe. So Carlo Biado goes through. It's Shane in. Two straight sets, 4-0, 4-1. What a performance we've seen from Carlo. So this was Mark White and Tim De Reuter. Thank you all for being here with us. Unbelievable match. And we would love to see you all back tomorrow. We've got plenty more action to come. See ya.
Wow. Shot.